21 years ago, the Colorado Avalanche and Joe Sackick hoisted the Stanley Cup trophy. They are one win away from doing it again, but can they? Welcome back, hockey fans. Welcome in if this is your first time to the channel. I'm Josh. This is the Hockey Flow, and today, it's Thursday, June 23rd, 2022. That's right, Avalanche Lightning Game 5. We got to preview that puppy. Uh, that's a big one tomorrow. Avalanche one game away from, or excuse me, one win away from a Stanley Cup win. Absolutely. Uh, but we'll get to that in just a moment. We got a lot to get to on today in hockey. First, we got to get to a couple headlines, including a new barn for Ottawa. That's right, we're talking new barns. Then we'll get into our Game 5 preview and things to watch. Then we're getting into the article deep dive, and I tell you what, speaking of the 2001 Avalanche, I found a real fun one on The Athletic, thanks to Michael Russo and Peter Bau. They went ahead and interviewed the 2001 Avalanche team and asked them to compare themselves to the 2022 team. So stick around. We're going to see what they had to say about that in just a moment. If you do enjoy the content, go ahead, take a moment, like the video, go ahead, subscribe to the channel. I really do appreciate it, especially as we're just getting started. We're going to be bringing you videos every day. You want to make sure you don't miss a thing, especially this, right? Today in Hockey history. I really appreciate you guys. So today, June 23rd, what do we have on the docket? It is Nico Heischer was drafted first overall in the 2017 NHL draft by the New Jersey Devils. New Jersey Devil fans, let me know in the comments how do you think this one's turned out. I'm a fan of the lad. I will say I'm a big fan of Nico. So again, let me know in the comments. I appreciate you. All right, headlines. Let's get right into it. Nashville Predators. This is that free agency news I talked about in the uh, the description for the video here. Philip Forsberg, the uh, the owner, came out and said if he's uh, re-signing with us, it's not going to be for anything less than eight years. We offered him an eight-year deal. Tell you what, no one else can do that. So Philip Forsberg, he might be tempted to take that. Um, Predator fans, let me know in the comments. Do you guys think he should take the deal? Do you want to re-sign him, or do you want to use that money elsewhere? Um, I, I think he'd be great coming back to them. You know, they're building something. They 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 had a good season, right? Uh, all right, Ottawa Sanders. Other big news of the day, it might be the news of the day, especially up in Canada, uh, awarded land for their new arena. I think we just went through this back in, what, 2016 and things didn't pan out, but uh, new day, new era, right? Uh, the Labrayton Flats had, has been approved. Uh, they have been awarded the land downtown. That's the important piece. Right now, uh, the Ottawa, Ottawa Senators Arena, their barn is actually out in the suburbs, uh, built in 1996, so uh, it's getting a little older too, but uh, they're due for a new one, and just in general for the team, for the city, um, this is beautiful for them. So congrats. Hopefully this goes through and they're able to get this one done. But all right, game five, Avalanche Lightning. The Colorado Avalanche are one win away from hoisting the Stanley Cup. Can they do it? We got four things to watch. You'll see Darcy Kemper's stats here on the side, but uh, we're, we're uh, wrapping up from uh, game four. Avalanche won the overtime thriller 3-2. Nazem Kadri slots it in. And tell you what, we're just going to talk about it real quick. Um, I see it number, uh, number three there. Can the Lightning get past the controversy? Cooper's emotions. So, the controversy that's surrounding the the too many men on the ice and stuff, and I'll agree. When I see the the footage and I see the clips, I agree. Too many men on the ice, but um, sounds like this is another issue of rule changes. We talked about it yesterday on the channel. Go ahead, check out the video. I'll leave the link down in the description for you. We talked about rule changes. Do we need to change some rules? This is another example. Um, if it happens all the time and we don't really care about it until it actually matters, yeah. But. We'll get into it in just a, just a moment, we'll more into that, but we're not going to spend a lot of time talking about that in general and whether or not it should be allowed. But uh, first and foremost, can the Avs close it out? Like we said, we're the Avalanche are 21, year, uh, 21 years in, in the making of a, another cup. They haven't hoisted it in that long, right? Now they're one win away from doing it. So my biggest thing I'm looking to watch, can they do it? Can they do the things that they've done to get to this point? Jared Bednar has had that team prepared, they're organized, they execute. Last game, we had some sloppy things, right? We had some sloppy moments, but I tell you what, the Lightning played a lot more sloppy. So um, if, if the Avalanche can play like we know they are able to play, that fast, composed hockey, this one's going to be probably over pretty quick, right? It, it, they, they can be very overwhelming. But will Tampa rise to the occasion? They're down three games to one now. Steven Stamkos came out earlier today and said, hey, all the chips are on the table, right? We got to put everything on the on the line. There's nothing to hold back. Everyone's going to be going 110%, right? Like, um, you, you can't hold anything. This is it. The season could be over tomorrow for them. So um, I'm really excited to see what, what Tampa can do. You know, let me know in the comments who's going who's gonna to show up for Tampa, right? Is it going to be Stamkos? Is he going to put him on, the, put him on, her, on his back? Um, we shall see. But 
here we go. Point three. Can the Lightning get past the controversy? So we saw at the end of, of uh, game four, you know, Cooper's interview, he's almost in tears talking about how the players were robbed. You know, we go to three straight finals and, you know, we should still be out there. I get it. We're disappointed. It didn't go your way in this situation. But at the end of the day, you got to pull yourself up by the bootstraps and, and overcome this, right? And so uh, can the Lightning put this behind them? Start fresh. You got to go one game at a time. You can't think too far ahead, right? But can they leave this in the past? Can Cooper particular, in particular leave this in the past? You know, maybe he's just doing that for the players, right? To put on the show, make the NHL see that. But inside, you know, maybe he's already moved past, right? That's what makes the, the great ones great. But I'm really curious to see if the Lightning and, and Cooper can move past, you know, the, this, these heavy emotions from, from last game, feeling like it was stolen from them in some ways. But last but not, not least... Which Darcy Kemper is going to show up? So pulled in game three, excellent in game four. We have his stats here thanks to HockeyReference.com. These are the four uh, games in this series. Against Tampa, game one, 20 and 23. Uh, game two, it's shutout. Game three gets bold, five goals uh, allowed. And then uh, game four is excellent again, right? 37 of 39 saves. That's that's fantastic. Even had an assist, right? Tendy assists. We have to love that. Uh, but which Kemper are we going to get, right? Tendy is a position, it's very mental, right? You got to be able to um, put out the bad, you know, forget about your mistakes. And um, when you're riding high, you know, feel that swag, right? It was neat to see him do the little skip, you know. Um, the Avalanche, the Avalanche, they're, they're, they're a special team right now. And um, a little jealous in a lot of ways, but Darcy Kemper, you know, if he plays like, like he did last last game, boy, I think the Avalanche are in good hands. So um, let me know in the comments. You think Darcy is going to gonna, gonna um, show up game four or, or are we going to get Darcy of game three? It's funny that we went from talking about who's going to start in Tendi uh, last game to now, you know, is Darcy going to dominate again? So really cool to see. Absolutely. But that's going to do it for our game four uh, preview or four things to watch. So with all that in mind, we got to make a pick, right? 37 and 30 on the, on the postseason. Not too bad. I said I needed a game seven, right? I, I picked the Bolts to win the series. Um, the Avalanche have just been so overwhelming. You know, we just go through the things we're looking for. Um, and I tell you what, the Lightning are done. Steven Stamkos is going to put the Lightning on his back, and they're going to win this. They're going to bring it a little closer, three games to two, one game at a time. I need seven games, right? Uh, I think the Avalanche are, are going to probably win, uh, you know, and, and, and my heart kind of says, you know, Avalanche are probably going to win, but darn it, I need game seven. I need more hockey. So uh, Tampa Bay Lightning, for the sake of more hockey, give us a win, will ya? All right, now we're moving on into the fun part of the day, the uh, the athletic. Uh, appreciate uh, Michael Russo and Peter Bao letting us uh, uh, <laughs> pick apart their, their wonderful article. This one was excellent, but uh, the 2001 Avalanche champs on the 22 Avs. I see Joe Sackick's fingerprints all over this team. And again, it's coming to us from Michael Russo and Peter Bao, two excellent writers for the athletic. Um, and I tell you what, the 2001 Avalanche, the reason we're talking about this is because they hold a special place in my heart. Uh, in 2001, that was one of my first, you know, great hockey memories. The, the Avalanche were my family's team. They, you know, I, I'm still a little young, not necessarily understanding, you know, what's my team, right? Like my team, you know, now let's go Oilers, right? I, I, I left the, I flew the coop and I, I left the nest and was able to fly on my own. But um, for a while, the Avalanche were, were the be all end all for me. And they still hold a, a small, a, you know, a, a small place in my heart. Absolutely. Seeing Joe Sackick, Ray Bork lift that cup back in 2001, um, you know, the depth on that team, you know, it just, it holds a special place my heart. So you see the 2022 avalanche and you see this special run that they're on and you get a little nostalgic when you see certain things. You see Nate McKinnon shooting up the ice and you know get little flashes of Joe Sackett back in the day. Um, but I tell you what, for me, I do see some similarities, but not everyone does. And so this article, essentially they went and asked the 2001 avalanche legends, a whole mess of them, uh, does this does your team compare to this 2022 team or how do they compare and it's a really great article I only gave us uh, uh, five individuals and small tidbits but there were a lot more so I'll leave the link down in the description for you guys to check out and you can see everything everyone has to say but uh, for uh, for right now let's just get started all right so um, there are maybe some some similarities right like people like myself that maybe remember that 2001 team uh, maybe you see some things that give you a little nostalgia but um, what does this 2001 team have to say so first and foremost head coach Bob Hartley he says it's it's pretty simple it's Joe Sackick's fingerprints are everywhere he talks about Joe Sackick's speed his composure his offensive ability his um, you know ability to just you know, take over a game you know but this team 
He's now the GM, right? He has had the ability to shape this team in his image. Uh, there's a reason Joe Sackick was the captain of that 2001 team, right? Um, but it's really cool to see the head coach, you know, talk about, hey, 2001 team, I see that team and how Joe Sackick played personally. And now I'm seeing this 2022 team and I see it's a lot of Joe Sackick's. I see the effort. I see, you know, the good, the positive things that Joe Sackick did. So really cool. Now, speaking of the, the gentleman himself, Joe Sackick, the GM of the Avalanche, for a lot of us, he's just hockey legend, hockey centerman Joe Sackick. Um, he talks about it, and it's kind of funny. He talks about it in terms like a GM. He talks about the depth, right? Like the two teams, um, that, that team in 2001, just top to bottom, excellent. Um, players like Alex Tange, Chris Drury, you know, and now we're looking at this team now. We've got our Andrew Caglianos, you know, and doing the dirty work and, um, you know, your Val Nishchuskin's coming up and becoming a, a essentially a top line winger right now. Um, it, it's really neat to see, but that depth is a very important role, right? And that's we talked about it all postseason for the Avalanche depth, depth, depth. And Joe Sackick talks about it too. He knows what he's doing when he built this team. Um, he also talked about the decor. He said this decor right now is the best decor since that 2001 team. That 2001 team, we're talking Ray Bork, Rob Blake, Adam Foot, um, etc. So um, it's 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 crazy to think about that. That was 21 years ago, but um, speaking of that decor, you know, Ray Bork, Ray Bork, right? And this one was really cool. He didn't actually give us much, right? He was a little coy, even in the article. Um, it doesn't even feel like I'm barely shortening this down, but um, he really appreciated the journey that both teams have taken. Not, it's not about the, the destination and what the end result is. It's about the journey. Both teams have really worked hard for this. This isn't something, and not to say no uh, other teams didn't, but um, the Avalanche have really earned this in regards of they've, they've been to the postseason over and over and then lost. So they know what it felt like to lose. They just need to get over that hump. It's not like this came out of nowhere, right? We were, they weren't a terrible team and then um, out of nowhere, you know, came to fruition or, or like the Knights, you know, the expansion team going to the finals, that, that's unheard of. Um, they, they had to earn this. So it was really cool to see, you know, Ray Bork, the defender, uh, the defenseman take that, that grinder mentality a little bit with it and, um, you know, compare that, hey, it's about that journey. Both teams have had to deal with adversity in that regard. Um, now, Adam Foote, speaking of defense again, the defenseman Adam Foote, he's got a neat perspective. His son, Cal Foote, is actually a defender on the, uh, the Tampa Bay Lightning, but um, he compared the stars. You know, he talked about how um, that 2001 team was loaded with stars. Peter Forsberg, Joe Sackick, Patrick Waugh. Oh, man, you know, I could keep going, but this 2022 team, um, same deal, right? Nate McKinnon, Kale McCarr, Landeskog, Rantanen, um, Kadri has emerged, Nishuskin, like, you, again, you can just keep going. It, it's, it's, it's great. So he talked about the stars, but he also talked about the tendies, and he said, you know what? Darcy Kemper isn't going to be Patrick Waugh. No one says he is, but is he good enough? Adam Foote says he is. He's good enough to win. He, he showed it in three games of the four so far, right? Three games uh, he's won. So, And last but not least, i got to include Milan Heyduk, one of my favorites uh, as a young kid. Um, he says, you know what? This 2022 Avs team could be better than the 2001 Avs team, but they have to win it, right? We're, we're having all these conversations comparing the two teams. All of that's moot if this Colorado Avalanche team doesn't get over that hump and win the game tomorrow night or, you know, following, you know, et cetera, if they don't win the cup, then these conversations are moot. We're not going to worry about it. We have to talk about next year's team, right? So uh, this is great. I, I really love this. Again, thank you, gentlemen, for, for um, putting this article together, The Athletic. Again, I'll leave the, the link down in the description. Um, we've been doing a lot of real fun videos lately, so I'll leave a couple uh, links down there for you guys. Definitely check them out. But what do you guys think? Does this 2001 uh, Avalanche team, does it compare to this now 2022 Avs team? Any similarities that you guys are seeing and I got a fun question for you you put this tw uh, 2022 Avs team up against that 2001 Avs team who wins no, I'm not going to give you my winner, but let me know in the comments and I'll uh, interact with you guys down there. I'll give you my winner there. But that's going to do it for the video today. I really do appreciate you guys. Thank you so much if you made it this far. We are doing a giveaway at the channel. We're on that race to 100 subscribers. So we're a little over halfway there. We're working our way. Again, thank you so much if you are subscribed. If you're not and you made it this far, take a moment. Go ahead. Click the button. It should be showing up in any moment now. But uh, once we hit 100 subscribers, we're going to do a special video just letting you know what you need to do, comment, etc. And uh, uh, make you eligible for, for the giveaway um, just to say thank you because I really do appreciate it. This is always so much fun. I love hockey. I know you guys do too. Um, but until next time, cheers! <laughs>